What does the technology that goes on in the regular world today, what does it really try to do in science? Basically, it's trying to develop tools that are more and more powerful, they're smaller and smaller, they're cheaper and cheaper, and easier and easier to build. If you extend that to the limit, where does that go? Where does that lead you? It leads you to this situation. The tools become so powerful that if they're used as weapons, they could destroy the whole earth. They become so small that uh, one person might hold one of these that would destroy the earth in both hands. It'd be that small. They become cheap enough that maybe it costs only $3,000 and where a great number of citizens could readily afford that. Instead of buying a new car, they buy three or four of these. And it becomes simple enough that there are several hundred thousand technicians properly trained with a little change of mind and all can in fact build such devices. We are beginning to approach that area, beginning to arrive at that area now. We can make real progress in resolving or lowering, or decreasing uh, man's inhumanity to his fellow man and the great hostility of weaponry and so forth in the world today. And the, unless we do that, uh, we simply will not survive our own technology. We will, the power of our tools will be turned against us by other people who are inhumane and we will destroy each other. Life is abundant in the cosmos in the approach that I'm taking. For example, in quantum mechanics, the modern view of the vacuum is that inside what we normally think is emptiness, there is continually appearing a little particle, a little form, a little group of particles, and then these almost instantly disappear so fast that they can't be independently caught and measured. But they are very real. We have experiments which show they really do exist that fashion. And they continually appear and disappear all of the time at an incredible rate. And any kind of form that you might wish to name appears every so often in that. Uh, any kind of living being, any kind of a material molecule or an atom of gold or an automobile or anything you might name, a living being, a living animal, appears in there with a certain occurrence, a certain frequency. And so what we have then is these things called ghost forms. And if we really look at that, it's an area that most quantum physicists are very, very uh, uncomfortable with. But nonetheless, it is real. And so if we look at that, we have to then speak of the density of reality, how dense a thing is in the overall plan. And when we say something is observable or real and physical, what we really mean is it's very, very dense compared to these ghost forms. But the ghost forms are real. And theoretically, if you add energy to that form so that they acquire more energy, you could materialize any form whatsoever. And we wind up by pointing out that in space-time, the time portion of it, thought and mind and spirit exist in time as well as the matter. And so there is at least one common dimension, if we treat that as a dimension, the time dimension. And the ghost forms that are even thought forms, therefore also can theoretically be materialized, gathered sufficient energy. Well, I think Sheldrake's for research, for example, is very significant. Um, he has simply labeled this the morphogenetic field, a field that generates a force gradually over a very long period of time. It accumulates an antidote for what's wrong with a species, for example, or any system, for example, to take the basic idea, the parts of any system, even though they were separated in space, if they're connected by quantum uh, potential, they act together. Uh, as if they were partially connected back to a same local system and not separated at all. And so I think it's very exciting in its implications for physics because we're talking about here a physics which is an entire order of magnitude deeper and more fundamental than the present physics we have. And as long as you cannot escape from the morphogenetic field, it is a spur which will drive physicists to look for the actual mechanism that causes that to happen. And when they really get that, and get that accepted, and get that where they learn to work with it, they will have a new physics, a more fundamental physics that can be used to better everybody's life.